Hey folks, thought I'd do a quick video today and today's quick tip about neck relief. So what is neck relief? Well, neck relief is an intentional bow that's placed into a neck. And that bow is achieved with a combination of the original shape of the neck, the tension of the strings, and the uh, tension that's applied from the internal truss rod inside the neck. On most guitars, there is a small amount of bow, up bow, and you might think of that as kind of a bowl-shaped bow placed in the neck between the nut and the point where the neck meets the body. Usually that bow is deepest at the 8th fret. The reason for that bow is because when you fret the guitar at the frets, at the upper frets, you don't want the strings buzzing on the lower frets and that amount of bow helps prevent that from happening. Neck relief will change with the climate. When the climate changes, in the summer and the winter particularly, you may have to adjust your guitar uh, in those time periods. So what are the tools that are required to check and set neck relief? These are the, tool the tools that I find the most helpful. Number one is a standard capo. Number two is a radius checking gauge. Typically you want to use one that you can check the radius with the strings still on the guitar. Number three is your truss rod wrench. This can sometimes be an Allen wrench, it can sometimes be more of a socket style wrench. It just depends on their style of truss rod. And number four, a set of feeler gauges. Typically you can find a set of these at an auto parts store if you can't find them anywhere else. The first step that I typically do in setting neck relief is I check the neck radius. This particular guitar has a nine and a half inch neck radius. The reason that matters is because guitars with a very large inch radius take a different amount of neck relief than those with a very small inch radius. And for a nine and a half inch radius guitar, you want 12 thousandths of an inch of neck relief. Now, what does that mean? Well, you want 12 thousandths of an inch of space measured at the eighth fret when a string is fretted on the first fret and at the neck to the body joint, which is typically the 17th fret. So, how can I hold these two points down and measure the depth between the string and the fret in the middle? Well, that's what the capo is for. The capo goes on the first fret. Now I can fret the guitar with one hand and measure with the other. So the way that we check this is that we first tune the guitar to pitch, we set the capo on the first fret, we fret the 17th fret with our right hand, and then we check the amount of distance between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string at the eighth fret. I usually start out around eight or nine thousandths and work my way up. And what you want to do is place the feeler gauge in that gap between the fret and the string and feel if there is a slight amount of drag. You can also look for the feeler gauge to push the string up off of the fret slightly. If it's pushing it up off the fret, you may want to go down to the next size feeler gauge. You want to end up where it's pushing the string away from the fret as little as possible, if not really not at all, and you feel a slight drag as you slide the feeler gauge in between those two points. On this particular guitar, I definitely have nine thousandths, and it looks like ten thousandths is that point where I get just a little bit of drag and just see the tiniest little movement in the string. Now, on this guitar, I measured ten thousandths of neck relief at the eighth fret, and I need twelve thousandths of neck relief. That means that I don't have enough neck relief in this guitar right now. When you don't have enough neck relief, you want to take some tension out of the truss rod, meaning that the strings are going to bow the neck up a little bit more. That means that I need to loosen this truss rod just a little bit. 
if I wanted to introduce less neck relief or take neck relief away, I would tighten the truss rod and let the truss rod bend the neck back um, you know, against the string tension a little bit more. And on a standard fender truss rod, it basically operates like any other nut. It's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So, I want to turn this truss rod counterclockwise if I'm siding from the nut to the bridge. It can sometimes be difficult to get the wrench into the truss rod nut itself. If you have any problems with that, you can loosen these strings in the center just a little bit to actually make the truss rod adjustment, but don't forget to, to tune the strings back to pitch before you check what neck relief you have. Okay, I've given that about an eighth of a turn. So let's see where we are. Now I have at least 11 thousandths. And 12 thousandths is now that point that I feel a little bit of drag in between my string and the fret. So that's perfect. If I want to verify that 12 is the right number, sometimes I'll go to 13 and see if that makes much difference. And 13 pushes the string up quite a bit more, so I know I'm dead on. So that's the basics of neck relief. If you like these videos, be sure to like and subscribe. I put out these quick tip videos fairly often, and I also put out some series on project guitars. So uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel, leave a comment if you like it, and I appreciate you watching.